hey and welcome back to yet another video on the channel on today's video uh, we're going to be setting up the foundation that we're going to use to build a customizable checkpoint system this uh, when i say customizable i mean we're able to drag and drop it it's going to have various components there's going to be the checkpoints themselves and then there's going to be a tracker which is going to keep track of the of the checkpoints so say for instance you have like 14 checkpoints in your system in your your level then you would then add each checkpoint to the tracker so that when you go from checkpoint one to checkpoint two then it will keep track of it it's also prevent uh skipping of checkpoints so that the player has to go through them in numerical order instead of going from like 1 to 14 and then they win the race so you have to do it in numerical order and the nice thing about the system is that you will be able to place into any level and then you add the checkpoints you add into the tracker in that system and then you can have it set up in numerous levels there will also be a safe slot that will then allow each level to have its own safe uh safe slot in this in the safe game blueprint we created earlier on so that there's no confusion between the levels each one will have its own thing there won't be uh this communication between the blueprints and all that so with that said let's get started we're going to start off by creating going down to the widget folder and then creating a new widget this will be the uh, race splash screen, which will appear at the end of the race, which will display uh, information such as the race times and stuff. So we'll just create that. We're going to rename this WB race splash, and that 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 we're not going to touch that for now. Then we're going to go back to blueprints. We're going to right click, not on a blueprint. Just right click. Then we're going to add a blueprint class and we're going to select actor and then we're going to name the BP checkpoint. This will be then the, uh, this will be where the uh, collision box is stored, which will act as the checkpoint system. And then you can either right click again and then create a blueprint class or you can just pick the blueprint created just now the BP checkpoint and then control D and then rename this one to bp tracker because they're both of actor class and then uh, we're gonna right click again and they're not under the blueprint class but over here by the blueprints gonna go down and select the blueprint macro library gonna select another actor and in this one we're gonna name bp time conversion this one will then be used to convert the race float variables, um, float values into displayable time text. So it will be displayed as split seconds, seconds and minutes with the colons in between, much like a stopwatch would be this, much like a stopwatch display uh, with that. We're going to just save all and then we're going to go to the uh, vehicle player controller. This will be where we add uh, the functions and the variables that will lay down the foundation for the system that we will use later on in other videos. Okay, with the vehicle player controller open, just drag and drop it at the top. Uh, first, out of business, we're gonna go over here by the uh, vehicle UI creation in the event begin play event. Right? Yeah, by the event begin play, just uh, select from here by the get player, get controller point, just move that over a little bit. And then we're gonna drag off the execution pen and search for a create widget. Uh, with this will then create the race splash widget we're gonna need this later on we're not gonna need the 
we're not gonna need the entirety of the widget we're gonna need certain parts of the widget which we'll get into later on but when we access it we need to be able to access it later on so we're gonna do that now uh, from the return value just right click and then promote to variable rename the variable to race splash reference or just ref and then just connect it up and then from either the execution pen or the pen below that you can just drag up and then look for add to report and then that's what has a report and then just connect it to the cause the vehicle so that everything is connected again and then that's that now after that we're going to go over to the variables we're going to click on the add new variable and then the first variable we're going to add here is the actual lab variable this will just display the current lab that the player is on and we're going to change this from a kind of variable type change it from a boolean to an integer and then let's go down to this category and then change this value reason for this is there's gonna be value variables and there's some text variables to display the value variables in the widget so just for organizing and make it look a little bit neater with the make sure that the actual lab variable is selected and then press ctrl d to create another variable under the same category and then rename this to max labs this will just uh, say in the event that you use the system for a circuit race then you can define the max amount of laps that the player has to complete before the race ends uh, we'll leave it as an integer and then just control D and then we're going to add the race time variable this will obviously hold the, this will hold the race time and then from we're going to change this from an integer to a Load value and then we're going to control D and then we're going to add lap time and then control D again. We're going to add a goal time. Um, I'm setting it up as a time attack so that I can cover as much of the range as possible. Depending on what you want to use it for, you might not need the goal time, silver time, or bronze time that I'm going to add and control. D and add a silver time, control D add bronze, control D again, and then add a best lap time, control D again, add a best race time, control D add a default race time, and then control D again to add a default lap time these will just define the default time that will be set you're not really gonna need this is just uh for say it's the first time the race is being done then there will at least there will be a time that will tell the player what to beat and with that done just call out the value category and then go over to the add variable at the top again and then the first variable that will be added we're going to add the lap time lap text variable uh, we're going to change this from a float to a text variable type and then down by the category we're going to add this to the text category and then make sure the lab text is selected and then control D and then add a race time text and then control D again and then add a max lab text control D again a gold text control D silver text control D bronze text control D map name text this will uh, 
we'll use this in the widget to display the map name so that you can name each level as you see fit it will just you know help to differentiate between the different levels and then with that they're still selected control d again and then we're going to add a best map text control d we're going to add a best time text control d we're going to add a default race text race time text and then control d again and then the default map time text to display and then our last variable we're going to add countdown text and uh, with that we're done with the text variables and then we just collect the text collection uh, under the variables that you're going to select new click on the plus we're going to create a couple more variables we're going to create a race complete with a question mark variable this we're going to turn from a text type to a boolean this will use as a condition for when the race is started to initiate the blueprints and a couple other stuff as well then with that one with the race complete selected control d we're gonna have a race start can spell race start This will also be used as a condition for other blueprints and then below that we're going to add another variable just control d make sure it's selected then we're going to add a save slot this will then allow each level to be saved independently of each other in the save game variable that we created in earlier videos just change that from a boolean type to a string type and then we're gonna go down to event dispatcher this will then dispatch the appropriate blueprints to each other so they can communicate effectively and we're gonna name this one the race has started yeah. so that all the blueprints know when we need to initiate their code when the race has started and with that we are done with the variables just compile and save and then we're going to head over to the functions we're going to add a couple functions here we're going to add the first one we're going to be init the text function this will then be the function where we're going to initiate the text variable that we created the next one is going to be the save game check variable this will only initiate if the player beats the times specified and then it will save and then head over to another function to then tell that function to perhaps overwrite the times so that there's new times that the player has to beat and then from there we're gonna have the save game function which will save the new times should there be new time then we're gonna have the login function which will then load the new times if there are any and then another function this will be the left time check function this one will then check if the player's time is greater than the specified time if the player has beat the time then we will then initiate the override and such then we're gonna add another one for race time check this will then do the individual race as a whole or as an individual and then do that and then the last one we're gonna add is the update goals function which will then be the one that changes the times if the player has beaten 
so with all of that done we have done all the variables we have this we have placed in the foundational function and the variables that we are going to need when we finally get to creating the system oh no no i'm sorry sorry my bad my bad uh, a couple more things for uh, go to the event graph in the vehicle player controller we're going to add a couple of custom events before we actually end up with the vehicles uh, that was not bad in that one uh, in a free space somewhere in the event graph right click and add a custom event we're going to name this one start game setup this will then be the event that starts the entire process and then we're gonna right click again at another custom event this one will then be the move to garage event this will then tell the other blueprints that the race is complete it will then display the splash at the end of the race and then after a certain amount of seconds has passed it will then move the player from the Race level to the garage level, and then we'll right click again at another custom event. This one going to be the update time event. Oh no, update lap. This will then have the uh, comparison between the max lap and the actual lap, and then see if the actual lap matches the max lap to then end the race if need be. Then we're going to move over to the side and then right click and add another custom event. This one will then be start race time. Uh, right click again and add another custom event. This one will be stop race time. And then just free up some energy space. Add another custom event. This one will then be start lap time and then the final custom event will then be the stop that time okay that, that is now truly the end of the fundamentals for the chapter system sorry about earlier that is now the end that is done we have done everything that needs to be done now in the next video we're actually gonna use some of what you've done today and actually start creating the system that we're gonna use so with that said uh, thank you for watching the video if you do want to know how the system turns out please stay tuned for more and until the next video